Hi there, welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk about data visualizations in Python and today widgets. In a previous video, I introduced you to IPy widgets. So if you're looking to get started, go ahead and check out that video first. But in that intro video, I promised you more widgets. So today we're gonna do exactly that. In this video, you'll learn about other widgets like checkboxes and dropdowns. We're going to explore an IPy widgets function called interact. And you can check out all of the code I'm about to show you on my GitHub page. So to get started, I'm going to import the IPy widgets library, and I'm also aliasing this as widgets. I'm also importing NumPy as well as PyPlot, which comes from the matplotlib module. Then I'm also going to create some data, and you'll see here that we have X data, which comes from a random uniform distribution. We also have epsilon, which is normally distributed. Finally, y is related to x as two times x plus epsilon. So you can basically just think of this as a noisy line where the slope is equal to two. I'm also gonna create some x values here, and these are just data points from zero to five at regular intervals. Now let's go ahead and create an ipy widget. So we know that we can plot these x and y values as a scatter plot, but we can also put a line on top of the scatter plot like this one. So what if we use a widget to control the slope of this line? We could basically vary that slope and see what slope is appropriate for these data. Okay, so to do all of that, we're going to create an IPy widget. And first of all, I need to put this plot into a function. I'm gonna call my function slope viz. And let's go ahead and put in a variable here called m, which will control the slope of this line. I will take my code, tab that over, and I'm also going to put m multiplied by x values here so that that m controls the slope of this line. All right, executing that, we can see that if we go ahead and call up slope viz, we will have a plot just like the one we saw before, but now we can use m to vary the slope of this line. Now, one other thing happens as m starts getting larger, well, the y-axis here changes its limits. Now, this is fine for a plot, but if we're building a widget, it can be really jarring to have that y-axis shift all around. So let's go back up to our function and specify our y limit directly. So our y is going to range from negative 1.2 up to 12.2, no matter what we put in for m. Great, so we can change m however we'd like and we will still see the same plot. All right, now we're ready to create our widget. For that, we're going to call up the ipywidgets library and we're going to be using the interact function. The way this function works is that first we're gonna pass in our slope viz function and then we need to pass in whatever keyword arguments we want this widget to control. So for us, that's going to be m. We're gonna start m the slope at point two and have that vary all the way up to five. We can also specify that we want intervals of point two. So let's see what this does. Now we'll see that m starts at a value of one, which is coming from our slope viz function right here. So the way that this widget works is that we can now vary the slope of the line by adjusting this slider. Point two is the smallest value, which is coming from right here. And this slider goes all the way up to almost five, which is coming from right here. And you'll notice that we have intervals of point two occurring throughout the slider. So in this previous example, we had a slider control the slope, but we can also do other things here if we'd like. So instead of having this tuple, we could pass in a list of specific values that we'd like this slope to be. So let's say that we have a list of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. When I pass in a list to m, ipywidgets interprets that as I would like a dropdown instead of a slider. So you can control what kind of widget you have based on the data type of your input variable. So interact shows you different types of interactive elements based on the data type of your argument. By default, booleans become checkboxes, string becomes text, values get converted to sliders, and lists become dropdowns. Let's check out some more default behaviors in the code. So we've already seen an example of how we can build a widget that will control the slope of this line. Let's go back to our slope viz function and let's say that we want to update this function a bit. What if we also want the option to either show the line or not show the line? 
By that I mean, what if I put in a new variable called line? If line is equal to true, I will plot the line. If it's not, I will not plot the line. So I can also add in a default behavior for that line. We're going to set this to false, that it will not appear unless someone tells it to appear. And we'll go ahead and execute that updated version of our function. Down in interact, I will update my function name, and then I'll just pass in that the default value here will be false for line. All right, so you can see what happens. IPyWidget's interact function is now going to include another widget here where we can do a checkbox to either have that line appear or not. And as we vary the slope, you will still see that line appear or not. Awesome. Let's try one more. Let's say that we also want the option to have someone put some text on this visual. So for this one, let's say if text, then we're going to put some text on this visual. So I'm using PyPlot's text function to do this. What this requires is first an X position and a Y position for our text, and then a string that will actually appear in that position. For us, let's use an F string. And the way F strings work is that now I can actually print out a variable here if I'd like. So let's say that the user passes in some text. I will go ahead and print that text out. And then maybe I'm also going to skip to a new line and say the slope is whatever the value for M is. All right, let's go ahead and update some of the default behavior here. So we will have an empty string to start out with. And let's update that. Also, down in my interact, I will also put a default value here. By default, this text is going to be blank. So, we now have m, which controls the slope of the line. We can update that. We can check that we do want the line to appear. And then we can actually put in some text here. So the person might say, hi there, something like that. We'll see that text appear on the plot, and we'll also see the slope printed out. And as someone updates the slope, we can also print that out so that someone can read off what the slope actually is. So all of these default behaviors are coming through based on the data type of these values. If we have a list, we'll see a dropdown. If we have a Boolean, we'll see a checkbox. And if we have a string data type, we will see a text input box. But what happens if you want some other type of widget to show up besides those defaults? Well, you can customize this by passing a widget directly into that interact function. Let's check that out in the Python code. So we just saw how we can use Interact's default behaviors to show us a dropdown which will control the slope of this line. But what if we wanted something other than a dropdown menu here? Well, it turns out that we can create our own custom widgets for this plot. Let's say that we wanted some radio buttons to control that slope instead. We'll create a Python variable called radio buttons, and this is going to come from the IPyWidgets library, and it's an object called radio buttons. Within radio buttons, we need a couple of different things. First, we're going to put in that the options for our buttons will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're also going to say that to start out, the first value that we'll have is 1. Now that we've got radio buttons, which is an IPy widgets object, let's go ahead and replace our M, which was a list, with those radio buttons. Executing that, now we see that we have radio buttons that control this slope instead of a drop-down menu. So this is really great. You can pass in whatever widget you'd like to control those different arguments. And this also has the extra benefit that there is another keyword argument here called description. And we can pass in a string that will appear to the left of these radio buttons. Now this says slope instead of M but it continues to control the slope of that line. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the interact function. If there's anything else you want to know about the IPyWidgets library, let me know about it in the comment section below. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. So, so by default, interact will interactive element